A religious leader is part of an organized religion is considered to be a priest or priestess. Of course, different religions have different terms for these individuals. They be, may be known as rabbis, ministers, mullahs, imams, or something else. These individuals are the keeper of the sacred law and traditions. They are found mostly in large-scale societies. Priests are authorized by a priesthood or some other religious organization to perform religious rituals designed to influence the supernatural world and to guide the believers in their religious practices. Priests personally do not have supernatural powers at their command. Priests are initiated and ceremonially inducted members of an established religious organization. That is, they are members of a priesthood. Their rank and function result from holding a religious office held by others before them. A shaman is a person who is not part of an organized religion and is in direct contact with the spirit world, usually through a trance state. A shaman has spirit helpers at his or her command to carry out curing, divining, and bewitching. Shamanic power is acquired individually, usually in physical and or mental solitude and isolation from, the, from other humans. Spirits or some other supernatural entities are revealed to the shaman and he or she learns how to control them. A shaman intervenes on behalf of a human or influences supernatural beings to perform some act such as curing an illness or discovering the cause of an unexpected death. The shaman essentially acts as a middleman in this. In contrast, a priest's client are the gods. A priest tells people what to do. A shaman tells the supernatural beings what to do. However, both shamans and priests are paid for their services with material things or prestige. Shamans are common in small-scale societies. However, they do not completely disappear in large-scale societies that have organized religions. For example, in the Philippines and in some American Philippine communities, there are individuals who perform spirit surgery. Evangelical Christians, faith healers, somewhat fit the de definition of a shaman also. It depends on what they believe is the source of their power. They are shamans if they personally have power to compel their gods to cure people. A prophet is an individual who receives divine revelation concerning a restructuring of religion and usually of a society as well. They call for a dramatic change. Not surprisingly, prophets are usually outside of the priesthood and are seen by priests as irritating, disruptive troublemakers. It is not unusual for prophets to come from humbler or unknown origins. When Jews and Christians think of prophets, people like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel usually come to mind. However, the most striking example of a biblical prophet was Jesus. He essentially came out of nowhere, as prophets often do, and insisted on a radical restructuring of Judaism. If a prophet is successful in convincing enough people that he or she is right, a new religion is usually established. That was the case with Mohammed and the beginning of Islam. Likewise, Joseph Smith's divine revelation and subsequent prophetic teaching in the 1830s and early 1840s led to the creation of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or the Mormons. Trance is activity that results in an altered state of consciousness in which an individual is in a hypnotic-like mental state or at least profoundly absorbed. This is a common technique used by shamans all over the world to enter the spirit world. When they go into a trance, they commonly report that they are taking a journey in which they must pass through difficult situations in order to reach their own spirit helpers. These friendly spirits then aid the shaman in curing an illness, bewitching someone, or in some other supernatural way. Around the world, shamans and mystics use a variety of methods to achieve a trance state. These include fasting, self-torture or flatulation, sensory deprivation, breathing exercises and meditation, prolonged repetitive ritual dancing and or drumming, hallucinogenic drugs. The shamanic use of hallucinogenic drugs has been widespread, especially in the Americas. Their use has been particularly common in small-scale egalitarian societies. When such drugs are available, 
they are usually considered to be the easiest and the fastest method of contacting the supernatural. Hallucinogenic drugs derived from plants are most common. Some of these drugs can quickly bring on visions of an overwhelming nature in addition to causing strong physical reactions. The use of hallucinogens traditionally was not limited to shamans in Siberia, the Amazon basin in South America, and Europe until the late Middle Ages. In these regions, an experienced shaman usually functioned as a facilitator and guide for a group of people taking these drugs in an attempt to contact or enter the supernatural world. Most cultures of the world have religious beliefs that supernatural powers can be compelled or at least influenced to act in certain ways for good or evil purposes by using ritual formulas. These formulas are in sense magic. By performing certain magical acts in a particular way, crops might be improved, game herds replenished, illness cured or avoided, animals and people made fertile. This is very different from television and stage magic that depends on sleight of hand tricks and contrived illusions rather than supernatural powers. For those who believe that magic is an effective method for causing supernatural actions, there are two major ways in which this is commonly believed to occur, sympathetic and contagion. Sympathetic magic is based on the principle that like produces like. For instance, whatever happens to an image of something will also happen to them. This is the basis for use of voodoo dolls in the folk tradition of Haiti. If someone sticks a pin into the stomach of the doll, the person of whom its likeness will be expected to experience a pain in his or her stomach. Sympathetic magic is also referred to as imitative magic. Contagious magic is based on the principle that things or persons once in contact can afterward influence each other. In other words, it is believed that there is a permanent relationship between an individual and any part of his or her body. As a consequence, believers must take special precaution with their hair, fingernail, teeth, clothes, and feces. If someone obtained these objects, magic could be performed on them, which would cause the person they came from to be affected. For instance, someone could use your fingernail clippings in a magical ritual that would cause you to love them or to fall ill and die. In a belief system that uses magic as the most logical explanation for illness, accident, and other unexpected occurrences, there is no room for natural cause or chance. Witchcraft provides the explanation. It can be the cause for most effects. Since it can be practiced in secret, the existence of witchcraft cannot be easily refuted with arguments. Believers are not dissuaded by pointing out that there is no evidence that any witchcraft was used against them. For example, you may wake up in the middle of the night and go to get a drink of water. On the way, you trip over a chair in the dark, which causes you to break your leg. You may be convinced that this is an accident. However, if you believe in witchcraft, you will ask why this accident happened to you and how. Magic practiced in secret by someone who wants to harm you is the answer. The only reasonable questions are who performed the magic and why. The answers to these questions come through divination which is a magical procedure by which the cause of a particular event or their future is determined. Once the guilty person is discovered, retribution may be gained by public exposure or punishment or by counter witchcraft. In societies in which magic and witchcraft are accepted as realities, mental illness is usually explained as being a consequence of witchcraft or the actions of a supreme being or force. In Nigeria, Folk curers are licensed by the government to use supernatural means and herbal remedies to cure people who are suffering from mental illnesses. When witchcraft is a widespread belief in a society, it may be used as a means of social control. Antisocial or otherwise deviant behavior often results in an individual being labeled as a witch in such societies. Since witches are feared and often ostracized or even killed when discovered, the mere threat of being accused of witchcraft can be sufficient to force people to model behavior.